So I mentioned that there are two basic ways that I recommend collaborating if you have the standalone or just regular version of in vivo. The most commonly used one, but can also be tricky for file management purposes, is what I call asynchronous collaboration. So the idea here, um, and I'm just going to walk through this process and also some of the best practices that I recommend. So I recommend that you pick somebody on your team to be your in vivo project manager. This person is in charge of managing and wrangling the files, keeping track of the most recent versions, merging files together, creating copies for everybody on your team. So this in vivo file manager will create what I call a team file. And this has all of the data, all of the nodes, all of the memos that you know at the start of your project that you want to use in this project. It may not be complete, but it's got a start, right? So it's, it's essentially a file ready to roll. So once you have that team file in place, the in vivo file manager will create copies for every single person on the team. As a general best practice, that copy should have the name of the project, the date, and the initials of the person, the initials of the person that the project is for. So if you have five coders on your project, every single person should have a file that has their initials on it and the date that the copy was made, including the InVivo file manager. So that leaves the original team file as existing somewhere as a backup in case something goes sideways with any of the copies of the project. So the InVivo file manager then distributes copies of the project to all of the coders. So coders one through five get their copies. They download them off the cloud or the network drive or whatever because the safest place to work on any in vivo project is on your hard drive, not on the cloud. Don't work on it on the cloud. Bad things can happen, okay? Trust me. Uh, download it to your computer and get rolling. So you might have a team meeting beforehand say like, all right, everybody's going to code interview one and here are the nodes that we're going to use and keep track of questions that you have in a memo. And People go off and they code, and then they turn in a new copy of their project. So they go to make a copy of their project with the new date, still their initials, and send it back to the InVivo file manager. And that InVivo file manager will then merge together those projects, you know, open up an InVivo project. It could be the backup project. It could also be their project. There are some slight distinctions with how InVivo will handle the merging, and I'll cover those a little bit later, depending on whether you open the backup file or you open your own file to start merging. And then one at a time, the file manager will merge together each of the coder's projects. Then you can run a coding comparison query and see how your coding is similar and different from your teammates. There is a one really, really important thing that you cannot do. Don't do this when you're using the asynchronous collaboration process, and that is don't edit the document, okay? So if in your interview, as you're reading along and you're coding it, and you're like, oh, that's a typo, that should say this, and you click to edit and you change it, even one character difference from your teammates' interviews means that InVivo will see it as a different document and not merge those documents together. In other words, it won't merge your coding in with your teammates' coding, and then you have to figure out, how did I change this? Go back and try and fix it, try to merge it together again. So everybody should have a rule in their team protocol to not edit documents. If there's a typo that you see you need to fix, Make that note in a memo and bring it up in your team meeting so that the project manager, the, the InVivo project manager, can make that change to the merged team file before that person redistributes to your team. So InVivo will track for you when was the last time somebody made a change to a node or a file. So when it was created and when it was modified is something that InVivo tracks for you. But it doesn't get so specific to track changes that were made in the node. 
So unlike track changes in Word, where you can see, oh, this was added, oh, this was added, once you merge, it's just there. And you know that it was modified recently, but you don't necessarily know what was added. So that's just something to keep in mind um, when thinking about collaborating. And in a lot of cases, this is totally fine. But again, if you want to do any uncoding and then merge your project together, that's something that you should be aware of. Once you've merged and your Invivo file manager has made any changes, you guys have met um, and talked about your coding and made any changes to that and how you might want to code, um, another tip in, is to update any node descriptions in the merged file as well. And that gets to something that I alluded to, which was that if you make changes in your distributed copies, right? So when, when everybody's working with their own copies, I call that the distributed phase. So if you make changes to the node description in the distributed phase, then uh, depending on how it's merged, it might get overridden. So let's say um, you merge with the original backup file. It will, you know, if you have that file open and merge in your copy, it's going to maintain the original files and lose the backup copy's node description. So that's just a little quirk. Um, a quick plug for a book that I really like, um, and in general is a wonderful resource on InVivo, but has a very good chapter on teamwork. Check out the third edition of Qualitative Data Analysis in InVivo by Baisley and Jackson, and they have a really good chapter on teamwork and some of the quirks that can happen when you're using this asynchronous collaboration merging projects approach. Once you have made any changes to that merged team file um, that you are interested in, which might include updating node descriptions, it might include updating the team protocol, then the team, the InVivo file manager will create new copies of the team file to distribute to team members. So this will, again, have the name of the project, a new date, and those each team member's initials, and they'll send it out, and you enter another distributed phase of this collaboration process. Then you essentially can continue analysis. So you might choose to divvy up the coding if you're happy with the results of your first iterator reliability test. You might choose to do more iterator or intercoder reliability. Either is fine. Another common question is, do I have to have two coders on every single interview or piece of data? And the answer is no, but it depends, which is everybody's favorite answer in qualitative data analysis. The really important thing is that you keep track of the decisions that you made. So when it gets to the point of writing up your process, these decisions are clearly articulated somewhere, and it's really easy for you to convince a peer reviewer or a client that you've done your due diligence so that your coding is reliable and valid and they should believe your results. The other way that you can choose to collaborate in the standalone regular version of InVivo is what I call hot potato. And it's essentially as it sounds. So you still have an InVivo file manager that you appoint that generates a team file with all of your stuff in it. It's got all of the data, all the nodes you want to get started with, any memos, um, and a team protocol ready to roll. But instead of making copies for each coder, you just make one hot potato copy that you move around from coder to coder. So the InVivo file manager creates a new copy with today's date, maybe with the coder's initials so they know it's for them and they're first up. And that person gets the file and codes. And then when they're done, they create another copy with the new date, they leave their initials and they send it to the next person. And then that person codes. So this is a simpler way of each team member going through and adding their coding. 